let me begin by making just a thumbnail definition of the geopolitical context in which we all find ourselves, including America. And in my perspective, that geopolitical context is very much defined by new, by two new global realities. The first is that global political leadership, by which I mean the role of certain leading powers in the world, has now become much more diversified, unlike what it was until relatively recently. Relatively recently still, the world was dominated by the Atlantic world, as it had been for many centuries. It no longer is. Today, the rise of the Far East has created a new, but much more differentiated global leadership. One which, in a nutshell, involves, if one can hazard, an arbitrary list of the primary players in the world scene, the United States, clearly, maybe next to it, but maybe the European Union, I say maybe because it is not yet a political entity, certainly increasingly so, and visibly so, China, Russia, mainly in one respect only, because it is a nuclear power co-equal to the United States, but otherwise very deficient in all of the major indices of what constitutes global power. Behind Russia, perhaps individually, but to a much lesser extent, Germany, France, Great Britain, Japan, certainly, although it does not have a politically assertive posture, India is rising. And then in the background of that, we have the new entity of G20, a much more diversified global leadership, lacking internal unity with many of its members in bilateral antagonisms. That makes the context much more complicated. The other major change in international affairs is that for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality, total new reality. It has not been so for most of human history until the last 100 years. And in the course of the last 100 years, the whole world has become politically awakened. And no matter where you go, politics is a matter of social engagement. And most people know what is generally going on, generally going on in the world, and are consciously aware of global iniquities, inequalities, lack of respect, exploitation. Mankind is now politically awakened and stirring. The combination of the two, a diversified global leadership, politically awakened masses, makes a much more difficult context for any major power, including currently the leading world power, the United States. I really enjoyed your presentation, but I'm wondering how would you rate the United Nations in, uh, in helping solve some of the geopolitical problems we've had? Some people say they're, you know, they're not adding a lot of solutions, and, and some people even suggest we should have another organization internationally that can do the job that the United Nations should be doing. And even people are talking about one world governments. I mean, how, how do you view the UN right now? Well, you know, there should be such an organization. The word should implies that there is a kind of uh, moral imperative or need for it. But it doesn't exist. Why doesn't it exist? Because we don't have a situation in which there is a concentrated source of power that has universal reach. Not even America has that. So the United Nations functions well in areas in which it is possible to generate consensus. And that deals usually with elements pertaining to human suffering, or to well-being, or to health, for example, the food organization, the health organization, the relief agencies, or arbitration of conflicts of secondary importance in which the international community can kind of endorse what the UN is doing. But the UN is not a world government. The UN, when it comes to politics, is based on a fiction, namely 190 states, which are members, each of which is co-equal with the others, except for the five that have the veto right in the Security Council. 
Um, so it is an organization which reflects the ongoing diversity of the world. And I think we have, as a consequence, we have to realize that real solutions to political problems, to political conflicts, come from those entities that have power and have the willingness or the ability to coalesce or get stymied in the process or even go into conflict. The UN can deal with areas regarding which there's a great deal of international consensus, like the ones I've mentioned. And that reality is going to continue for some time to come.